Up Internet. How are you people? Welcome to KG Poker. Right now we are waiting for a table at 1-2. Buying in for 200. Let's see what we can do tonight. Okay, so on our first real hand of the night, we make it $16 to go with Pocket Kings. By the way, is there any better feeling than seeing a king in the window? The flop comes ace king three with two diamonds. He checks. I make it $17 to go. He makes the call. We go to the turn, which is a six of spades. He checks it again. I make it $40 to go, and he tosses in the call. We go to the river, which is the nine of spades. He checks it for a third time, and I bet 90 bucks. He tosses in the fold, and we take it down. First real hand of the night being a set of kings. Not too bad. Five dollars strong. <laughs> By the way, real quickly, can we get a thumbs up for these new graphic animations that I made by hand, frame by frame? Like, look at the way that flop comes in. Let me know if you guys like it. Me too! So in this hand, I look down at ace-queen offsuit on the button. I make it $16 to go, and we get a few callers. We go to a flop of 9 for queen, I bet 30, and we get one caller. The turn comes the 7 of hearts. He checks it again, I draw out another 30 bucks. He tosses in the call, and we see the 9 of clubs on the river. To me, this is a bit of a scare card. There's definitely a possibility that he could have called with middle pair. Well, stubborn, didn't want to let go of his hand. When he checks it to me, I don't really see a reason to bet here. If he was on a draw, he missed. If he does call, we're only getting called by hands that beat us, I would think. So I check it back and he shows us king 10 of diamonds. So he had a few draws. We should have charged a bit more on the turn, but we take this hand out. In this hand, we look down at the beautiful sick jack suited. I originally called the $2 pre-flop bet. Someone in mid-position raised the 5, so I toss an extra 3 bucks, and we go to a flop of king, 6, and 6. When the player bets $12, I toss on the call. I don't think it makes any sense really to raise here. We want him, if he's bluffing, to keep bluffing. If he does have a 6, we just want to hope that we're out kicking him. The turn comes at 3, and he bets $25. When it's on me, I don't really think about it too much. I toss in the call, hoping that if he is bluffing again, we're going to have a third barrel on the river. When the river comes to four of hearts, though, it's a little worrisome. There's a flush out there now. There's a straight out there now. Villain checks it to me, and this makes me think that my hand is pretty strong. Hoping he has a hand like a king with a decent kicker. When it's on me, I bet 35. He thinks about it for a little while, and he tosses in the call. He flips over 8-6 suited, so we take this one down. In this hand, we look down at King Queen of Clubs. I make it 17 to go, and we get called by two players. We go three ways to the flop, which comes King Queen 3 with two diamonds. I guess check that on to me. I make it 25 to go, and we get one caller. The turn comes the 10 of diamonds. A little bit of a scare card. I don't see any reason to bet here, being if he had a straight or a flush draw, they both completed their draws on this card. He checks it to me, I check back. So we go to the river, which is the five of spades. It's on the villain and he bets $75. Something to note here is that he mentioned when he first sat down at the table that he is a blackjack player. He likes blackjack a lot better than poker because it's a lot of fast action and you could make money quicker. So when it's on me, I got a big decision to make here. I know a lot of people would just insta call. I feel there's a lot of hands that are beating us here. Asia Jack, Jack Nine, a pair with a flush draw on the flop. King of Diamonds is still not accounted for. 
When it's on me, I think about it for a little while, and I'm just trying to think, does he ever have a flush here? We got all the two pairs dominated, and I don't even think he has that. I think he's either got a flush, a straight, or absolutely nothing. I could beat a bluff. <laughs> After some thinking, I finally toss in the call and he flips over two tree offsuit for a pair of threes. We take this one down. Make it 25. Three players. In this hand, I look down at King Jack offsuit on a straddled pot. I bet the 15, the straddler makes the call, and we get another place in the call as well. The flop comes 9, King 5. I make it 25. We get called. Other player folds. The turn comes a queen. I check it to him. He checks it back. The river comes at three. I bet, and he folds. We take it on another small pot. Two. Kevin, let's go, buddy. Okay. King high. Me too. Good one. Queen. Yeah. Everyone loves the chop pot. So this is where things get interesting. I look down at pocket kings. I'm one after the button who has a straddle on. I make it 16 to go. Player in mid position raises to 50. Everyone else folds. So when it's back on me, I have a decision to make. I can just call and see a flop or I can raise and figure out from there what to do. My original plan before I even put out the raise was that if I raise to 125 and then he goes over the top, that most likely means that he's got aces here and I'm just gonna fold. Losing 125 bucks with pocket kings isn't too far off from a typical situation. That's what my plan is for the moment. So I toss in the raise to $125. The gentleman goes into the tank for a little while. After thinking, he goes over the top, all in. So now when it's on me, I'm going to let the video play out the full length of me thinking here. I started fighting my own thought process. I started to think, what if he saw me raising the button straddle and was just trying to play some kind of mediocre hand and go all in with it. What if he's got something that I'm beating? He could also have pocket kings here. He could have queens. Ace king is a very, very big possibility. Ace king, ace queen, if it's suited. These are all hands that this player could be doing this with to try to get me off of my hand. And then if I do call, he's got live cards. I'm thinking, is there any universe where if I fold this, I'm right? You guys probably are thinking I'm just lying, you guys that are watching this video, but no. If you guys watch how long this video actually goes for, you all know that I really was thinking this through. After thinking for a very long time, I decide that the chance of him having aces here is not as great as him having anything else which is unbelievably stupid because my plan when I first tossed out that 125 was that if he raises all in, I am going to fold. I went against my gut. I went against my plan. 
Okay. And I tossed in the call. We go to a run out, which comes queen high. I flip over my cards, and unfortunately, he flips kings. over pocket aces. Figured that. This was one of the biggest, if not the biggest pots I've ever played for 1-2. And, and I pretty much knew right from the get-go, once he raised to 50, and I re-raise on top of that. If he 5-bet shoves all in, there's only one hand that he could have here, and that's pocket aces. But I went against my gut. I went against my instinct. I thought that there's no way I've run into aces here, which is very dumb. <laughs> And we lose a huge pot. Now, we're not down to zero. We still have a little over 100 bucks in front of us. We still have about 50 to 65% of our original starting stack of 200. But, man, what an unnecessary call on my part. I felt so stupid after this hand was over. It would have been such an amazing clip to have on the vlog of me folding kings pre-flop, especially if he showed pocket aces. <sighs> this hand was absolutely brutal, and after this hand, it was already late in the night. I just kept playing pretty much everything that was being dealt to me, trying to just force my way back to at least 200 bucks, so that way I could walk out even at the very minimum. Mullen. Sixty-five all in. What do you have? Don't ask. Don't ask one here. Do you want the ball? No. Am I alive with two cards? Like the other Yeah, I have a pair. I did actually make some good hands like this Jack-8, which turned to full house, but we didn't really get any action. I end up packing up my stack and walking out of the casino at around 2.30 a.m. Definitely could have left the casino earlier with a nice profit and not having to go home exhausted, but it is what it is. A lot of people I spoke to told me that you could never really fold pocket kings here. Especially because I had them covered and it, it is what it is. It's a cooler. This is what poker is sometimes. I really wanted to make that fold. I know it might seem unbelievable to you guys, but I really felt like folding those cards. I really don't know why I called. <laughs> well, guys, I really screwed up this one. Really screwed up. Long story short, we was in for 200. We're out for 100. I was trying to like literally go just double up or walk out empty, but that wasn't working out for me. <laughs> I was trying to make anything happen just to at least get back to the $200 that I walked in with. Man, what a horrible mistake. Everything was going my way. And then I couldn't let go of the pocket. What a terrible, terrible way to play that hand. I literally, I literally said to myself, okay, I'm gonna bet 125, and if he goes all in, I'm gonna fold, he's got aces. But when he went all in, I changed my mind. Wait, what? I planned everything out perfectly fine, and to just, Give it away like that was horrible. I should have folded and that probably would have been better for the vlog than calling and winning if he didn't have aces there. I think folding and if he showed, that would have been a lot better. Horrible hand on my part. Once that happened, couldn't hit traction anymore. I wouldn't say I was on tilt because Honestly, I didn't feel like I was on tilt. Yeah, that's a little nerve-wracking what happened, but 
it wasn't like the end of the world. I played a big hand, pocket kings, ran into aces. I didn't go down to zero after that hand. So yeah, it's a bummer, but I mean, how often do you fold kings and you're right? Pretty annoying. At our high point, I think we had like 510 on the table. Would have been a nice profit to take that 300 off, be completely honest with you. My current bankroll right now, without the chips that I walk in with, my current bankroll at home is 589. If I cashed out, I would have had 889. Would have been nice. We got very close to the thousand mark. And then if you counted the extra 200 that I had on the table, yeah, you could say it was uh, over $1,000 in my bankroll. What are you gonna do? Not often you run into kings versus aces. At least not often for me. I, I don't remember the last time I ran into kings versus aces. I think it was a home game that me and my friends had a tournament. I don't think that ever happened to me in a casino, so. Well, if it did, I definitely don't remember. So that's the good news, I guess. <laughs> But yeah, what a bummer. I played that hand horribly. You guys seen how long I tanked. And I was trying to think, is he doing this with kings? Is he doing this with queens? Can he be do He's never doing this with jacks, right? That's the first thing I thought to my mind. So what hands is he doing this with? And the only hands I came up with is kings, the other two kings, queens, and obvious aces. And I just didn't want to believe he had aces. I... No, you guys are going to destroy me in the comments. Definitely should have folded there. But for some odd reason, even though after my plan completely worked, I would have only been out 125 Losing $125 with Pocket King, it's not that bad of a loss. If I just lost 125 folded, would he show us aces there? I don't know. I think he would want to keep me on my toes, keep me guessing, make me like try to put me on tilt thinking I made a wrong play. I don't know if he shows aces there, but I freaking knew he had it and I still fall. I don't know what the heck is wrong with me. I mean, it wasn't too bad of a session. Everything else went right. I just, I screwed up and played one hand very, very badly. Shouldn't have went all in pre-flop for 400 and something dollars. Bad move on my part. We're gonna move on. I don't know when's the next time I'm gonna be playing poker. I am supposed to be going out of town for a business trip. I don't know if I'm gonna be playing poker on the business trip. I don't know how far the casinos are from where I'm going or if there's like card houses or anything like that. <sighs> so disappointed. So disappointed in myself. I should have folded and I, I stood late just trying to get back 200 back that I started with. If I would have just folded that hand, I still would have had at least, I would have been up at least 150 to 200 bucks. And I would have left the casino earlier. I'm going home at like three something AM again, down. Like would have been a lot nicer to go home with 150 to 250 dollars profit. But whatever, what are you gonna do? That's poker for you. I guess I'm going to call it a night now. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. That's going to be it for me. I'll catch you guys in the next one.